Hi guys, I'm Lucero and today I want to talk to you about some of the tips I have for people with chronic eczema, especially severe eczema. As my skin stands right now, um, I still have a little bit of irritation and dryness in the textbook uh, places, so like crook of the arm, around the wrist, behind the knees, sometimes behind my neck. But um, anybody with severe eczema will recognize that the way that my skin looks now is actually pretty awesome, even if it's not perfect. I struggled a lot with severe eczema and um, it's the kind that keeps you from sleeping, makes your showers and baths hurt even if you don't use anything, just the water hurts. Um, it's the kind of eczema that is always bleeding and always cracked and sometimes weeps, really weird liquid, like it's just the kind that's prone to staph infections, it's so gross. But as my skin is right now, I'm very happy with it and I want to share some of the tips that have worked for me uh, with all of you. I've divided it into two parts. So the first part is three tips for prevention and then I'll have three tips for treatment because I found that if the prevention works well enough, then you won't need treatment. So. So yes, first tip I have for prevention is figuring out your triggers. For me, that's food allergies, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to take prick tests, um, and that determined that I'm allergic to eggs as well as feathers and mold. And I've found that identifying allergens and other sorts of triggers for your eczema is the best way to go. I find that American dermatologists have this really heavy focus on topical treatments, so topical steroids, but not enough of them focus on the stuff that goes into your body or actually try to figure out what's causing your eczema. Eczema is chronic, but that doesn't mean it has to like ruin your whole life. So for me, um, going on the elimination diet uh, for the past two and a half years has worked pretty well for me. Uh, I find that when I eat eggs, um, by accident, even just a small amount will give me a pretty significant flare up, so it's just something that I avoid. Figuring out what is causing your eczema is absolutely the biggest tool you will have because if you can't figure out what that is, you're just going to end up either suffering really strongly or going through cycles where you go to the dermatologist and they give you the topical steroids and it goes away for a couple months and then it comes back. And it's really hard if you don't have access to medical tests or if they're too expensive. Um, but otherwise, I would recommend trying elimination diets or looking up some common um, allergens that might be in your home. For example, I did have feather pillows, which made sense as to why I had developed eczema on my back and my neck. It was from contact with my pillows. Um, anything like mold or dander or dust, think about those as well and see if you, that's something that you can eliminate from your household. The second thing I recommend for prevention and keeping eczema at bay is supplements um, as well as allergy medicine. So I take generic <laughs> allergy medicine every day. I've been given the go-ahead by various dermatologists to do so. The only issue is that prolonged use of one type of allergy medicine will cause your body to develop a tolerance, but I've been told by dermatologists that if I switch it up every couple months I should be okay. So I'm currently just taking um, loratadine and something that's also worked for me is fish oil and this was actually a discovery that I made this summer and actually linked it in connection with my eczema. I can't really tell you a whole lot about why fish oil works. I just know that I take the recommended dose every day and for the past two months I've had really really nice and non-problematic skin. For the most part like fish oil has been really really awesome in just keeping my skin hydrated from the inside and making me feel like I don't need as much moisture in the form of moisturizers and gentle cleansers. I highly recommend um, fish oil of course if you have any conditions in which this would counteract or interact with any of your other medications. I can't think of any but of course if you have any questions, I'm not a doctor so you should probably ask a doctor. <laughs>
third and final preventative step that I take to keeping my eczema at bay is staying hydrated as well as a combination of minimizing my caffeine intake. There are several different foods and drinks that um, will cause inflammation in your body and any sort of inflammation will irritate your eczema. So things like that are caffeine, um, I'm pretty sure alcohol is one of them. I don't drink so I couldn't tell you how that interacts with eczema. In general, I found that if I'm drinking enough water and keeping my caffeine intake to a minimum, I still drink coffee every day but it's not something that I let myself indulge on like I used to. Um, sometimes I would drink coffee just because I was bored and just because I wanted something fun to drink. Don't do that. <laughs> um, it's not that great for your skin. In other aspects as well, um, I find that my facial skin kind of looks dull or is really dry after I've had days where I intake a lot of caffeine. Something to keep in mind. Now, when it comes to treatment, let's say you're going through a flare-up and life sucks, which it probably does if you're having a pretty strong flare-up. Um, I have three more tips for the things that I use whenever my skin's acting up and being a little rough with me. This is what I do. So the first tip I have is switching into gentle um, products in pretty much every aspect of your life. So when my skin is acting up, I like to switch over to a natural sensitive detergent. Um, I also don't get crazy with any of the skincare products that I use. In fact, my favorite thing is actually just 100% pure petroleum jelly. It's not something I can recommend for everybody to use. It's not the easiest thing in the world to get used to slathering this stuff on, especially since it's so... I want to say the word is occlusive, could be wrong, but it's just, it's heavy, it takes a while to sink in, um, but it's really non-irritating for my skin, and I found that most creams and lotions that aren't prescription will actually irritate my skin a lot, even when they're designed for sensitive skin. And as for body wash, I really like Aveeno, um, any kind. I mean, they have sensitive kinds, they have just regular, which is what I use, but Aveeno is tried and true for me. I mean, it's the one body product that when I get into the shower and my skin feels a little stingy, just from the water, um, rubbing some in, uh, just kind of gently massaging it, makes the sting go away. And it makes the shower showering experience a little bit more manageable. The second treatment that I would recommend is one that sounds really scary but it's actually super wonderful and it's bleach baths. Before you continue, I need to absolutely let you know that you cannot bathe in straight bleach. I'm just throwing that out there. Do not bathe in straight bleach. You can buy the concentrated bleach and I will have a Mayo Clinic link um, in the description that has more instructions but in general you add about a fourth of a cup of bleach to a half bath that's warm. You sit in it for 10 to 15 minutes and you feel a lot better. It's done a really great job at helping me with eczema flare-ups. Um, the strength is about the same as a swimming pool so if it burns you probably use too much and even when my skin has been raw and open and really really irritated bleach baths don't burn that much um, if you move around and your skin's open the water stings regardless but it's not an uncomfortable sensation and I found that it's really one taking a bath for me is just really relaxing but two helps speed up the improvement process with my skin. And if I can find it, I will also link a Stanford article um, that involves research kind of explaining why bleach works and basically just confirming that it's pretty good for your skin in small doses. And it's my favorite trick to use when I'm having a flare up and one that I'm always a little bit hesitant to recommend just because it sounds crazy, but I assure you it's a small dose and it feels really nice and it will help the healing process with your skin. 
Now the last tip I have is sleep in long sleeves and in long pants. Sleep is supposed to be a very healing time for your body, but if you suffer with severe eczema, you know that it's not always healing because if your skin's itchy, you are probably going to scratch. And I've definitely woken up to like really raw arms with like blood under my nails because I just relentlessly scratched myself in my sleep. One thing that works for me though is slathering myself in Vaseline and then putting on cotton leggings and a cotton long sleeve and I have to keep them rolled down. This keeps me from scratching in my sleep and it also helps keep the moisture in and I've found that it's just a multi-purpose sort of thing. You know, you don't scratch and your skin is kind of getting a rest and time to heal as well as um, having that moisture locked in there all night. I know people have recommended other things as well such as wrapping yourself in saran wrap or um, I've been told to wear gloves because I tend to get really bad eczema around my wrists and my knuckles but that doesn't work for me. My hands are just an area that I kind of I've given up on, you know, if it heals, it heals, if it doesn't, it doesn't, because one time I tried to sleep with uh, plastic gloves over my hands and I had slathered my hands in Vaseline, um, and I woke up the next day with, one, my gloves off and my hands scratched to smithereens, and two, the gloves themselves had been tied in a knot and thrown across the room and I had no recollection of doing that, but clearly sleep time with Sarah wasn't having those gloves. Not every part of this is going to work and it takes a little bit of trial and error to figure out what techniques will actually work. And for me that is wearing leggings and wearing a long sleeve. Those were my tips. I hope that they have been helpful. If you are struggling with severe eczema or you have like a kid or a friend who is also struggling I wish you all the luck and just hang in there I know it gets really hard and it's such a pain in the ass to deal with just know that I'm here with you I've been through it these are the things that have worked for me and I hope that they provide you with at the very least new things to try and new things to give you a little bit of hope and I wish you the best of luck on your eczema journey. So, so yeah, so that's all. I'll see you next time. Bye.